Good morning, I'm Karin van Oostrum from the Pestalozzi Trust. I'm glad to be able to speak to you today on what the law says on homeschooling. My family and I were one of the first homeschooling families in South Africa and we started homeschooling when it was still illegal in 1992. My three daughters were homeschooled since birth and today are all grown up. First I want to tell you something about the Pestalozzi Trust. The Pestalozzi Trust is a public benefit organisation which was founded in 1998. It is managed by a board of trustees consisting of permanent trustees and advisory trustees. All the trustees are homeschoolers who have a solid knowledge of the practice of homeschooling. Amongst the trustees, there are a few with legal training and even a few advocates. Of course, the trust also uses the services of an excellent legal team. Now, what does the trust do? The trust protects the rights of its members to be able to educate their children according to their best interests. The trust campaigns for good legislation and also makes an effort to spread the correct information on homeschooling. We keep our members updated on developments on the legal front. And ever since the establishment of the Trust, and even before that, we have been running a free information service on homeschooling by telephone and by email. So you are welcome to contact us if you have any query will gladly be of service. How do you become a member of the Trust? Members pay an annual membership fee of 1,200 Rand per family per annum. You may also pay monthly and the monthly fee is 100 Rand per family. Members receive a members pack containing amongst others the emergency number which is available 24-7 to members. Members use the emergency number when they land in a conflict situation regarding their homeschooling. We then help them solve the matter. Anybody may therefore join, except families who already are or have been in trouble regarding their homeschooling or regarding child neglect. So now you know what the Best Lossy Trust does. Let us talk about homeschooling. Now what exactly is homeschooling? Homeschooling is defined in the law as education at the child's own home. As soon as you remove a child from his or her home, he or she no longer receives homeschooling. Therefore, if you put your child in a cottage school or centre, they are no longer homeschooling. The cottage school or centre is regarded by the law as an independent school and the only way in which to run a cottage school or centre legally is by registering as an independent school. This is not as easy for a small school and the law on registration for independent schools needs to change urgently. Such small schools may also apply for membership of the Pestalozzi Trust to support them during the time that they try to get registered, which might, it might often take a year or even a few years. Important, a child in a cottage school or centre cannot be registered for homeschooling since the child does not receive home education in his own home. The child will be automatically absorbed into the South African school system when the small school registers as an independent school. Okay, so that is what the law says on cottage schools and centres. Let us look specifically at homeschooling. A home learner who receives home education at his own home must be registered with his provincial education department. That is according to section 51 of the SA Schools Act. Act 84 of 1996. Section 51 is one of the two sections in the SA Schools Act that you need to take note of. But please note, when we now talk of the law, 
we refer to the present law, the Unchanged SA Schools Act 84 of 1996. This is the law that today is in force. The law is changing, as you might know. The Bella Bill was published for commentary in 2017 and is now in the last phases of revision. It, however, still has to be approved by Parliament and only then will it be law. The main changes in the Bella Bill are regarding the powers of SGBs and regarding homeschooling. Should the Bella Bill be approved in its present form, it would give the Department of Basic Education much more control over homeschoolers. Now let us look at Section 51. Section 51 deals with registration. The section was for the first time included in the SA Schools Act in 1996. So what it says is, you as a parent may apply with the educational uh, with the provincial education department to register your child as a home learner there are three requirements to be met first when the registration must be in the interests of the learner secondly the education likely to be received by the learner at home a must meet the minimum requirements of the curriculum at public schools and B, must be of a standard not inferior to the standard of education provided at public schools. And the third requirement is, the parent must comply with any other reasonable conditions set by the head of department. The head of department, when assessing your registration application, must act reasonably, fairly and lawfully and register you if you have reasonably satisfied the requirements. If you make an application for registration in terms of Section 51 and it is not approved, you may apply again or you may appeal that decision internally and you may also apply to review the refusal in a court. But note there is no penalty attached to Section 51. The penalty is part of Section 3 in the Act, which is the second section of the Act that you need to take note of. Section 3 deals with compulsory schooling. Now, according to the law, and the law might change, but what the law today still says is, a child is liable for compulsory schooling from the first school day of the year in which it turns seven, until the last school day of the year in which he turns 15 or obtains grade 9, whichever comes first. The law also says uh, if a learner who is subject to compulsory attendance fails to attend a school, the head of department may a. investigate the circumstances of the learner's absence from school, b. Take appropriate measures to remedy the situation and C. Failing such a remedy, issue a written notice to the parent of the learner requiring compliance with subsection 1. A parent or any other person who prevents a child from attending school and who fails to attend to the written notice from the head of department therefore is guilty of an offence. On conviction, the person is liable to a fine or to imprisonment for a period of not exceeding six months. The bailable changed the period to six years, but in the most recent revision, it shows 12 months. Please note, this is a criminal conviction and will affect your criminal record. You may have ever only be prosecuted if you committed the crime without just cause. This term is not defined in the law and it is not clear which circumstances will be accepted as just cause. So what does this section mean for you? It means that if you don't send your child to school you may be prosecuted. 
Now, what is the reason for that? On the one hand, the reason is that the state apparently regards school attendance as necessarily leading to education, or conversely, that a child can receive an education only by attending school. But what the law actually needs to regulate is not school attendance, but education. On the other hand, it creates a serious problem in the sense that the government regards homeschooling merely as another form of school education. It seems as if the only difference, according to them, is that the premises in the case of homeschooling is a home and not a school. This creates endless problems when the law needs to be applied. In any event, you and your children and all homeschoolers in South Africa are subject to this law and this section of the law. According to the new policy on home education published in 2018, your child is exempted from school attendance if the child is registered. You therefore cannot be prosecuted in terms of Section 3 if your child is registered. The question now is what can happen when you are not registered? If you do not register, you are a parent or a person who prevents a child from attending school and therefore you may be prosecuted. The vast majority of homeschoolers in South Africa are not registered and the fact that there is such a small number of homeschoolers who comply with the law is a major problem for the Department of Basic Education. Now what does the Trust suggest? The Trust can tell you what the law says, but not more. The Trust requires not that its members be registered and supports every family in its specific situation. If you need help in analysing your situation, you are welcome to contact the Trust. We'll help you find a solution for your specific situation. If your children are registered and you are a member of the Trust, please keep us updated on your registration process and contact us immediately if your child's best interests are being jeopardised. If you are not registered, please do the following. It's very important to inform yourself on what the registration form actually says. So, in the first place, go to the website of your provincial education department. Download the registration form. You will note in the third place, information is required on the learner, the parents, the tutors, the curriculum and also on your motivation for homeschooling. In the fourth place you will see that the last paragraph reads as follows. I, name of parent or guardian, hereby declare that I have read section 3, 1 and 51 of the South African Schools Act 1996 together with the policy on home education. I further declare that I understand and accept the responsibility to provide, monitor and assess the home education of my child and that I have supplied full and correct information. Therefore, a parent who signs and submits the form declares according to the form that he or she has read sections 3 and 51 of the SA Schools Act as well as the policy on home education. The parent also declares that he or she accepts the responsibility to provide, monitor and assess the home education of the child. Therefore, go and read the sections of the law and go and read the policy. The policy is difficult to read since it's an internally conflicting document and it will probably also be difficult for an official to implement it. Nevertheless, you need to study it thoroughly. So why do you have to read it so thoroughly? To ensure that when you do sign the form, you still protect your child's rights. We are in a strange situation in the sense that 
The policy that you need to read when you sign the form actually needs to be read together with a law on which the policy is not based because the Bella Bill on which the policy is based has not been promulgated yet. In addition, some provinces have their own homeschooling regulations which potentially may clash with the requirements of the present law and the new policy on home education. Therefore, study these documents very well to ensure that you understand its implications. Worried parents often ask themselves questions like the following regarding your child's right to education. Can your child really exercise his or her right to education if he or she can't receive home education? Regarding your child's right to parental care, are you able to provide parental care to your child as described in the Children's Act if you register? Regarding your child's best interests, would you act in your child's best interests when you register? Something else that worries parents is the home visit. No mention is made of home visits on the form. It is however mentioned in the policy as one of the prerequisites for registration. That means an application will only be approved after a home visit has been done by officials of the department and when these officials are satisfied with the premises where the home education is conducted. Some of the problems with home visits are that the requirements which a home must meet are unknown to homeschoolers and also many homeschoolers experience a home visit as an intrusion into their privacy. So this is what the law looks like at present. But remember, the Bella Bill is going to change everything. A large number of requirements are going to be added. As you know, many homeschoolers have resisted the bill and the resistance won't die down soon as long as parents are of the opinion that the law is in conflict with the children's best interests and as long as they feel that the law infringes on their child's right to education and threatens their parental right to provide education to their child which is in the child's best interest. For you, the most important thing to remember is to focus on your child. Never forget this when you are dealing with the law. This is what is the most important. To educate your child in his or her best interests and to the best of your abilities. This battle is a battle that has a long history and in all likelihood will still be raging for a long time in our times. We are battling for the right to freedom in education. In the sea of storms awaiting us, you most probably will need legal support. You may join the trust or, alternatively, find yourself your own legal team. And remember, they should be well versed in education law as well as in homeschooling. To discuss your family's specific situation, you are welcome to contact the trust at 12 30 or defensor at the text of the two sections of the SA Schools Act, the policy on home education and um, also the latest version of the homeschooling section of the Bella Bill will be available from the Trust. Thank you for the privilege to be able to speak to you. Goodbye. The Homeschool Lounge provides information on home education in the South African context. If you have suggestions for future topics or would like to contact us, please send an email to thehomeschoollounge at gmail.com.